Uh, every day we have new headlines about Evergrande. First of all, give us the latest, given that I remember last night it was about them not providing a special dividend. Absolutely, yes. So Evergrande sort of did this U-turn. It's now not going to provide the special dividend to uh, its equity investors. And of course, while in some ways that's good news for creditors, um, the overall message is that things aren't organized and that confidence in, uh, from investors, it, it's hard to maintain that if Evergrande is changing its plans in this way. And when you talk about confidence, and it's not just investor confidence, but it's also some of uh, Hoy's kind of very well-heeled, well-connected friends, right? Is he running out of options here? It absolutely does feel like it's a little bit different this time, right? Um, and, it, you know, even simply looking, for example, at the levels that the bonds have gotten to. Now, the story of Evergrande, of course, has been the, the company getting right to the brink of these liquidity crises, but always being able to find saviors. And this time, we're really not seeing Huey yet pulling something out of the bag in the way that we have in previous years. And the danger here, of course, is that we get into this very vicious cycle where um, it becomes essentially really difficult to lift confidence and even you know positive news or a big stake sale would would be tough to really change the direction of investor sentiment and so what's next for evergrand given that really beijing seems determined to crack down on all of these different sectors of the economy Absolutely. I think, you know, one important factor is to see Evergrande and put it into this context of this broader crackdown on private firms alongside education, tutoring, property sector. Um, I think, you know, for really, what's really key for Evergrande will be these upcoming maturities in the next sort of eight months or so, $2 billion coming due and then $1.45 coming due just after that. Um, and in the shorter term, there's, this question remains about this $300 billion in liabilities. How exactly is Evergrande going to continue kind of servicing all of that debt and keeping things afloat, even while investor confidence and banking, its relationships with banking is also coming into doubt?